Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm speaking here today on behalf of the Measuring Ecosystem Services and Assessing Impacts Project, and I'd like to talk to you about how we can use ecosystem services to link biodiversity and marine ecosystem values by talking about some of the work we've been doing. The environment around us provides us with a number of goods and services that we as humans benefit from, like providing food and fresh water, but also opportunities for recreation and cultural experiences. All of this is captured in the ecosystem services concept that links what happen happens in an ecosystem or what biodiversity in a system does to what people care about. We can divide this up in a couple of smaller steps where processes in an ecosystem will result in ecosystem functions and these functions generate goods and services that we as humans benefit from and that have value to us, whether that's monetary or non-monetary value. We can apply this idea to the marine environment where we can look at how these processes and functions will generate ecosystem services. And in this case, in estuarine and coastal systems, we can see that there's a, numbers of, a number of processes that are indicated in red, like filtration, trophic transfer, and connectivity. And they generate a suite of ecosystem services like food provision, but also nutrient recycling, habitat provision, and leisure and recreation. Our project is interested in how we can look at the ecological aspects behind service delivery. And we focused on identifying and studying multiple ecosystem services simultaneously, and how we can best measure and map specific ecosystem services of interest to New Zealand. So the first bit of work on studying multiple ecosystem services is linked to my PhD project, where we applied the idea of bundles of ecosystem services to shellfish. So bundles of ecosystem services are sets of associated services that appear together repeatedly across space and all time. And we've applied this idea to shellfish, as shellfish provide a number of goods and services, but we also understand the ecology behind this. So based on a literature review study, we identified four bundles of services that are generated by shellfish, and we understand the ecology behind these, uh, these bundles. So the first bundle are the marine resources, so how shellfish provide food, material, but it also includes aquaculture opportunities. The second bundle includes estuarine health and quality effects, so how shellfish affect water quality regulation, but also the removal of nutrients, pollutants, and pathogens from the system. The third bundle looks at habitat provision and modification, so how shellfish interact with the environment around them, and thereby can stabilize shorelines and sediment, but also affect sediment biogeochemistry. And the last bundle is their effect on community composition, so they alter biodiversity and food web structures in the system. So it's important to understand the full suit of services that is generated by, in this case, shellfish, as we need to include all values and benefits generated in our management approaches. The second part of what we've been doing is looking at how we can best measure and map specific ecosystem services. We've selected two ecosystem services that were identified by New Zealanders as key services from the marine environment. So for these two services, we've measured and mapped and provide, thereby provide spatial data that is crucial for ecosystem-based management. So the first service we looked at is how seafloor environments uh, provide refuge or nursery habitat for juvenile fish and invertebrates. So by the amount of biogenic habitat or structure that is available on the seafloor, uh, this will attract juvenile fish and invertebrates and thereby provide this service. So if you have a, a bare environment like the image on the left, this service won't be generated while a very structured environment will. So Drew Laura, in his talk tomorrow in the session on understanding degradation and recovery, will tell you more about how they've measured and mapped this particular service. The other service we looked at is the removal of pollutants, and in particular nitrogen. As one of the key stresses to our estuarine and coastal environment is the amount of excess nutrient loading that is coming off the land, and that causes uh, eutrophication symptoms in these systems, like algal blooms. And these have negative ecological impacts, but it also results in a loss of amenity values. So understanding the system's capacity to remove these excess nutrients is therefore crucial, and Emily Douglas in her talk will be telling you more about how they've measured and mapped this service, but also the uncertainty that can come with this approach. So these were just uh, some of the examples of the, of the uh, benefits and values that are generated in these environments, but I hope it shows the link between the ecological understanding and how we can use this information to sustainably use and manage these estuarine and coastal systems. Thank you very much.